I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to like, subscribe, follow wherever you listen to us so you don't miss any episodes or bonus stuff that we do. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And we're starting a new series today. I don't think we said that when we when we started taking off as the task, but this this is this is a series that's been in the works and in the mind for oof, more than a minute. Mm-hmm. Sandra got sick and tired of hearing me yell about things that were wrong in fix and she was like why don't you just tell everybody and I was like well I fucking will so here we are (laughs) um no because because I tend to read predominantly male male fix where Sandra tends to lean more towards like female male reader insert I encounter more dangerous sexual practices although some of them are but I encounter more misinformation shall we say than Sandra does and Sandra genuinely got tired of me coming to recordings going, I have read this fucking thing. I give him me, me, me. And she was like, well, just fucking, you want, you want to do a thing about it? And I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. And now it's come to do the thing. And I'm like, I don't want it. I'm nervous. <laughs> don't bear with me if I own an earth. Um, but since I, since I was christened the agent of chaos and kink quite a while ago, mm-hmm. and I'm chaotic all of the time, I figured I should probably start living up to the, the other side of that name. So... We are starting a new series that will have its own playlist on YouTube and everything, and we're calling it Fact versus Fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember who came up with that name. Probably me. <laughs> but the idea is that we're going to try and dispel some of the more common myths and misinformation, incorrect fanfic tropes that you sort of see scattered around. And while the majority of you listening to this are probably going, but Carly, we already know this. I'm insane. All right. I put disclaimers on everything I fucking write. Just leave me to rant for a minute, okay? Mm. Because for all of us out there that are going, well, I already know that, there might be one person that doesn't know that, you know? And they're too embarrassed to say that they don't know that. And we've all been that person who's just trying to muddle along going, yeah, no, I definitely know what I'm doing. It's fine. So just just, just let me have a minute, all right? I raise my so, hand out of no embarrassment at this point because it's like, if I don't understand something, I just ask Carly. <laughs> real when we started doing this we'd like cut out and stuff and she'd be like i'm so embarrassed to say this but i don't know what this means or that means and now she just asked me an episode she's just like wait wait wait, what is that now what <laughs> we've come a long way in in 18 months oh, it'll be 18 have. months at the end of this this month holy fuck i know so as i said this came about from me going i saw that's fucking wrong somebody's gonna get hurt so we figured the, <laughs> the best place to start would be anal sex and lube because this is the most prevalent thing that I see in male male fix. Again, it's not so much dangerous, but the propensity for serious injury is there. It's more just kind of like motivation and it's fanfic, okay? It's fantasy. We all suspend disbelief about the realities of butt stuff and clean up and prep and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine, okay? But there are things out there that I really do need to call attention to. So let's just... Let's, I've got a list. Let's just go down the list, okay? I have points. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm so wait, fucking prepared. You glossed over Carly has a list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For this, Listen, Carly I prepared, made a list. I prepared for this. <laughs> I prepared for this. It has like... It has like bullet points, and check marks, and like it headings does. and things. It but does. Sam's really impressed. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. I started making lists, and this bitch started making PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> I cannot catch up. I am permanently on the back foot here because she was like, "I like lists and tables," and I was like, "We don't need tables." And you were like, "We need tables," and I'm like, "Yeah, we need we tables. Need tables, yeah." See, yeah. Yep. And now, see, I now- have my game, mm-hmm. and you upped yours further. I'm not making whole ass presentations. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Shut up. Don't <laughs> put that on me. I don't have brain space to start making pre- You want me to make a full PowerPoint on different types of lube? I will. Don't test me. I'm a person on the edge. So yeah, this episode, anal sex and lube. It started out as that. And then as I was writing, I was like, it's kind of like a basics, like a, like a, like an intro kind of, you know, the, the, the do's and do nots of, of butt stuff. Again, these, this came to me predominantly from reading male male things. 
but they also apply if you are an assigned person assigned female at birth person who wants maybe someone to do stuff with your butt mm-hmm. but you want to do stuff with someone else's butt yeah, okay cool opportunity the anal ball, play. yeah yeah, yeah there we go mm-hmm. if you have an ass and you think maybe you want to do some sexual stuff with it this is for you all right so we'll start out we'll start out with lube is your face red is, the- is your face red are you okay are you feeling a little uh, warm <laughs> it's warm <laughs> we'll start out with lube, um because again this is the thing that I see wrong. I'm just going to say wrong mm-hmm. in in so, so many things. I'm just going to start out right out of the gate. Don't use commas lube. That's not what it's designed for. If it's not designed for that, don't do that. It's not. It, it may feel slippery and there's a word, the opposite of viscous, whatever the opposite of viscous is in the moment and you might be like this will probably it won't okay Mm -hmm. it dries it goes tacky it's not made for that don't do that Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. number two even worse than lube blood you see this i've seen this in in some (laughs) fix that have been you know i would think that would be very dark and that'd be a dark fic anyway i think to begin with. but i've seen it yeah the thing is though i've seen that in some not dark fix i've seen Mm. it in like you know dark heavy kink fix and i'm like oh shit don't do that <laughs> um mm, fuck don't do that but i've seen it in live fix as well so these, these are things that i would consider that i wouldn't need to tell most people mm. but once, don't use blood once if anything it's worse than come okay mm-hmm. it, but don't do that right mm-hmm. other things that you shouldn't use water shower sex and they're like oh in the water no right if you are an assigned female at birth person and you have the, the, the self-lubricating technology that assigned female at birth people do, you ever got in the bath and you thought, eh, maybe, and you, you, you might be pleasantly aroused, but for whatever reason, the bath water just, just, just takes it away and you're like, well, where does it go? Who fucking knows? It goes into the mystery of the water, but the, the point, <laughs> it's not designed for this. Water is a terrible idea. A terrible, terrible idea. So we need to embrace technology <laughs> and and use what's been created for us. The great for this minds particular of science. Person. Yeah. yeah. The mm-hmm. great minds of science have come together and given us synthetic lubrication. Mm-hmm. And you should use that. Mm-hmm. And if you think you're using enough, no, you're not. Add more. Like, that's just a general rule for most things. You might be mm-hmm. like, yeah, no, this is probably enough. No, it isn't. Just add another squirt. It mm-hmm. won't do any harm to anybody. Mm-hmm. But the reason the reason I'm so so militant about that particular, like the things that you shouldn't use, mm-hmm. is most people seem to think about the damage to the bottom if they're not prepared adequately, you know, or incorrect lube is used. But over in the UK, it's called a banjo string. I don't know if you have any cute little nicknames for it. What's the it frenulum? Called? Okay. It's a okay. banjo, a banjo string. Banjo string. The frenulum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sanj, okay. Sanj is going to have a little think if there's any kind of quirky names that you have for it. I would that. have but no over idea. Here. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 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 the front. It's called the frenulum. Mm-hmm. And it's the point where the foreskin attaches to the um penis, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. And it's still there. Even if even if you've been circumcised, you still have a frenulum. Mm-hmm. And it still connects what's left of your foreskin to the actual like meat of your penis. Mm-hmm. You can tear it and rip it mm-hmm. and snap it. That's why it's called the banjo string. Mm-hmm. These are all things that can happen if you don't prepare and use lube. Mm-hmm. So everyone's like, oh no, the bottom. And, oh, you know, like obviously they can tear. And if there's one place you don't want to tear, Mm, it's gonna be a button that yeah. nobody's gonna have a nice time with that so but i feel like a lot of people focus on the the potential injury to the to the bottom to the the, the receiver the the fucky as mm-hmm. opposed to the the, the, the post box <laughs> the post box <laughs> not the post man this needs to come out after that episode now otherwise that would make no sense the 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 catcher the whatever euphemism mm-hmm. you particularly yeah. want to have pitcher versus catcher yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. postman versus post box mm-hmm. the the propensity for damage is more towards the the receiver 
mm-hmm. of the, 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 the penetrated partner. But your dick still ain't meant to go in there in anywhere dry, really. Yeah. There's a reason that, that female systems are self-lubricating. The friction is not going to work for anybody Feels if it's not, yeah. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So that's why I'm hopping on. None of don't use water, don't use cum, don't use blood. I think those are the main ones I've seen. I have seen food used that tends to be quite common, butter and things like that. And I mean, go for your life if you want the yeast infection of your fucking life, mate. If you're like, do you know what I want? I just want my cock to burn constantly for like a month. Crack on. Get out the fucking layer pack. That's not a brand in the US, is it? It's a, fucking, it's a brand of butter in the UK. <laughs> what do you call butter? Give me a give me a really common brand name for butter. Um, I I use Land Lakes. Right there, you go. Crack on Land Lakes. There you go. Not if for you're this. Just like, I, <laughs> I use no. Sandra knows better. Sandra's been yelled at aggressively by me about this. Sandra knows better. Oh, but gosh. if you think that what you need in your life is a thrush infection that will make you wish you could take a pair of garden shears to your cock, by all means, use butter or oil or anything else you might find in your kitchen. It'll probably do a fine job of lubricating the situation and you will regret every life choice you've ever made. A few days after and frankly you deserve it don't do that i mm-hmm. i am personally of the opinion that food has no place in the bedroom i don't mm-hmm. like it it's sticky and gross you get on the bed sheets ick no but if that's your jam we're not here to kink shame just mm-hmm. don't use it to insert stuff into other stuff mm-hmm. that's all so the second most common thing you see is spit spit as lube i am of the opinion that that is not something that you should do because it's kind of like water. It'll dry up pretty quick. But in my research for this video, I found out that actually that is quite common in people who, especially gay men, you know, mm-hmm. I, I am assigned female at birth. I have a perfectly, perfectly functional area to put stuff in. So that's what I use. But I, in the course of my research, you know, but it, it comes with the caveat that the catcher, the receiver, the person being penetrated is is okay with it, first mm-hmm. of all, that this is not, you know, their first time bottoming, they're well used to it, they know how their body works, things like that. Like it's, you know, it's fine, but probably don't do it for the first time. You know, mm-hmm. if if it's, the, you know, if it's your first time sleeping with someone or it's, it's their first time, you know, in it using anal play for anything, Mm-hmm. Just err on the side of caution. Mm-hmm. Just use lube. Mm-hmm. You know? Just honestly, most things in your life are going to be enhanced with, with lube. Mm-hmm. Most sexual things get better with a bit of lube. Right. So yeah. But spit as lube is so common that uh, y- you can't really talk about this kind of stuff without talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I would like, I don't like it. And when I used it, it was for a genuine non-consensual rape scene that was happening Mm -hmm. so that should tell you where i fall on the spit is fine scale which is not really yeah but you know that's i feel like spit using spit is kind of like when you're in an established relationship and if if you know if neither of the participants can get pregnant or you know they're fine with getting pregnant it's kind of like eventually there comes a point when you've been with someone long enough that you're like well maybe we stop using condoms you know because the risk of catching something You've yeah. been monogamous and committed for so long that it's, you know, all your tests have come back clean and whatever. So I, w- yeah. I would I would group it in there like it's a conversation for later down the line, not the first time you get into bed with somebody. It sounds like consenting and having a adult discussion is important yeah. for this kind of situation in general, in general, when you're being intimate with somebody. And I know we don't always get that. And again, like we understand, like, you know, again, fanfic is fantasy and, you know, as Carly said, suspending disbelief, but you're just like taking it to a, 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 just like, you know, PSA level. Like, you know, this is just not like don't yeah. In real life, you know, just, just yeah. think about what's, 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 what's going to be happening and take that, take and the I mean, other person into consideration to end your own safety uh, when it yeah. comes to that stuff. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I, 
I, I want like my logical brain is going nobody's taking sex advice from fanfic Carly and then I think about all the things I've read in fanfic and then like twisted and manipulated them and like so what if we did this in my relationship it's not inconceivable well I yeah just, I mean I, I think you could I can't sit by and, and I've I felt <laughs> like I know. I mean, I felt like I, I think fanfic is a very healthy place to to kind of learn and explore. And if you don't know, you know, you kind of like write about things and then you actually do research. I mean, I've I've done this based off of conversations I've had with you to then, mm-hmm. you know, write something that I was like, well, let's make it feel you want to make it safe for your partner. If you're going to be doing this with somebody, I would think that you'd 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 at the very least, like, you know, again, this unless we're talking dark stuff and you know, you're going, you know, into a different mode with your fiction, you, you're gonna want the safety of the of the of the partner, of the person in in real life. So my question, because I know you said Sandra asked me before, but do most <laughs> do most lubes now kind of like and you said silicone lube is the best, but will some, will some like just blatantly, like for those that are just not that well versed, like, will it say great for anal? Like, will it, will it, will it yeah. give some people like a, Hey, you need it for this. This is what you're going to do. Like, is there a little chart? If I go into my <laughs> handy dandy sex store somewhere where they're like thinking about this, use this, you know, like just like that kind of thing. Like I would think uh, as people are getting more comfortable with that, they would have that on packaging and stuff too. Like to just kind of like, yeah, give people that that insight and stuff. Okay, good. You've you've segued me so perfectly into my next point, which is if you're gonna be engaging in anal play, get the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't go down to the drugstore and buy. Do y'all have Jurex over there? Is it called mm-hmm. Jurex? What mm-hmm. is the? Yeah, we have like, that. Yeah or KY, or wh- the shit that you find at the drugstore is mm-hmm. not designed for this. Mm-hmm. This is not what you need, okay? Mm-hmm. Spring for the more expensive stuff. Everybody's going to have a better time. So I don't, I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the stuff in the drugstore is made for. <laughs> Presumably, I would imagine the heterosexual relationships, because most mainstream products, like sex products and things like that, a design and made for heterosexual relationships. So that's probably what it's for. Or I'm, for beating off or what, yeah. whatever. But I feel like maybe think. hopefully I think that some places have like a little bit more options. I think maybe have gotten better. You know, maybe at, I, I, mean, tell you. I just know drugstores around here. Everything's so expensive. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a couple more options. Probably not top tier, but maybe something a little bit, a little bit better. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Not but sure. And in answer to Sandra's question, if you go, you don't have to go to a sex store because they still have that kind of taboo, ooh, sex store kind of mm-hmm. thing over it. Mm-hmm. But you go online mm-hmm. and things will be, you know, looms the designer will say on them mm-hmm. that they they work really well for anal. You can mm-hmm. buy lubes that are exclusively for fisting people. You can buy mm-hmm. lubes for fucking everything. Okay. Anything you might want. And they will. And it's right there on the packet or the bottle, or whatever, what is for, what is good for. So, yeah, and you you could probably get this on Amazon. I haven't mm-hmm. looked on American Amazon, mm-hmm. but, you guys, like, it's ever, you know? <laughs> but you're just not going to find it in Walmart, is my point, yeah. you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's what I'm making. So, yeah. and the, as Sandra said, there are different types of lube. So what you're going to find in Walmart, what you're going to find in drugstores, is going to be water-based lube which is, you know, it's fine, but it dries out quite quickly. Again, it's, I think it's more designed for heterosexual relationships that just need just, just a, a little, little extra, bit, you know? Yeah, just a little extra yeah. something. Mm-hmm. When yeah. assigned female at birth, people get to a certain age and things start functioning the way they're supposed to, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. That. Mm-hmm. That's what that kind of stuff is meant for. The best lube for anal sex, hands down, is silicone lube. It's the best. It's the best. Okay. It doesn't okay. degrade condoms like oil-based lube does. So they, like there are different tiers of lube and they do different things. So mm-hmm. oil-based lube will not work with latex condoms. It will break down the latex and it will you, the condom will fail or has a much higher chance of failing. So don't mm-hmm. use that. You know, check mm-hmm. check your lube, people. Look at the label. Check your lube. Mm-hmm. Silicone 
is the best for anal. It's it doesn't dry out as quickly, you know, it lasts a long time. It's it's designed for that. The only caveat that comes with silicone lube is you can't use silicone lube with silicone toys. Mm. A lot of toys are made of silicone. So again, check your lube, check your packaging, just make sure that things marry up. Silicone degrades silicone, it will break down your sex toys. So don't and they're do that. expensive, so take good and care of them. Expensive. Yes. So your options there are whack a condom over your sex toy. You can lo- use silicone lube all day long, twice on a Sunday. You wanna? Whatever. <laughs> or no condom, oil-based lube, equally fine on silicone toys. Water-based lube is fine all across the board, but as we've discussed, not the greatest for mm-hmm. putting stuff up your butt, your butt, anybody else's butt. Mm -hmm. PSA, do not non-consensually put stuff up people's butts. Only touch butts with consent, guys. Mm -hmm. Don't just be going around putting stuff up people's asses. Mm -hmm. So that kind of that kind of covers the because like lube is the most common myth, incorrect, misinformed thing that I particularly see in male male fanfic that I read. That's not to say it's the only thing out there. But mm-hmm. that's the main one. So I'm like, mm-hmm. what other things? And I'll pull some resources, you know, I'll bob some links down in the description about, like, you know, charts and lists and things of what kind of lube you might need and where you can purchase <laughs> it and, and things like that. But, again, communication is key. I know I haven't said that yet already, but I say that in, like, 78% of these videos anyway. Mm-hmm. Communication is key. It's, I'm here to give you my opinion, best practices, but that's not necessarily what everybody's going to do. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. if you and your sexual partner want to, you know, you spit or come or blood or water, or I'm not going to stop you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn them knock on your door and go fucking pack it in. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. Communicate with your sexual partner, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah. So the next the next most common thing that I see incorrectly putting out misinformation is prep. How many fanfics have you read where the person is total, the the, the receiving person, you know, the catcher, the bottom, whatever, complete virgin. And then the top will just be like, bit of spit, stick it in. (laughs) Don't do that. Don't do that. Again, I would like to remind you, I don't think many guys listen to this podcast, but if you do Mm -hmm. and you're thinking, I might like to put something up someone's ass, baby, my cock, right? You can rip your cock, all right? That bit of skin, you can tear it, you can rip it, you can snap it in half. And let me tell you, that's not a fix-at-home job, lads. That is the emergency Uh, room. Yeah. You have to go to the emergency room. And let me tell you, those nurses might be professional to your face, you are the laughing stock of the staff room all day. Everyone's laughing at you with your bleeding dick Aww. because you didn't pay attention to yeah. Carly's sex education. Okay? <laughs> You're funny until the next guy with a carrot up his ass comes in. Or girl, you know, whatever. <laughs> Anyone can put what they want up their ass. But we'll talk, we'll get into that in a minute. So, Ed, <laughs> if you are in an established relationship, you have communication, everybody's fine. Maybe you and your sexual partner are absolutely fine with a bit of spit and whack it in. That's fine. But if you're new to this, if you're listening to this thinking, I might want to try that, but I'm not 100% sure, right? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't just (laughs) injure the person you're having sex with. Injure yourself. It's not good. Nobody's going to have a good fucking time. Fingers first, all right? One finger, right? Not any particular finger. Any off. particular finger should they start with? You're supposed to start with your pinky because it's the okay. littlest, but mm-hmm. you know, there's there's not that much difference between like your pinky and your index finger. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh god, I'm thinking of that scene from Fifty Shades of Grey. Now. <laughs> I just try never to think of that book, but I am. So, fingers first. You okay. again? Uh, your ass is not designed to put stuff in it, right? The vagina opens. It expands, things relax, better da da da. They're self lubricating, ah, isn't it fucking grand? Right? You're asked none of those things. It does not self lubricate. It does not fucking magically open when you get aroused. None of those things. So, preparation. 
fingers first. With lube, not spit, please. Thank you. Fingers first. Build it up slowly. One, two, three, however many you're going to put in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Again, the caveat with all of these things are if you are new to this, if this is the first time with a new partner or the first time in general, if you're in an established relationship, you've probably already clicked off this going, I fucking know all this. And that's fine. But if you're still here, you know, you like sex education with Carly. So go slow. Don't just start fucking jackhammering away. Slowly. Listen to the person who is being penetrated. They will tell you. Not only just listen, you need to look at you need to watch the person's reactions because there will be some partners that still may not feel comfortable telling you, voicing their opinion as to, or they might think, oh, I can tough it out. I'm sure it's going to get better. So it's important not just to listen, but to, if you know your partner well, or just in general, if you're having a good time with somebody you just met, you guys are all on board with it, consent in a way, to whatever it is you want to do, you still probably might want to check on some visual cues from the person. If you're, you know, if, if you, if you can see what's going on on their face, because that's important because someone can say one thing and sometimes they're still maybe trying to work on making you happy. So again, not just listen, look, ask, check in, because sometimes someone will not be telling you right off the bat they may want you to ask them how does that feel am i hurting you should i do Mm -hmm. i need to stop those are things that a respectful and responsible partner does in that situation i would just say that as to add to if you sex education with carly (laughs) yeah if you are not sure about what i think most people have heard of the traffic light color system by now Mm -hmm. i think it's it's out there in the popular zeitgeist check Mm -hmm. in with a color Mm -hmm. if the person says green we're all golden Mm -hmm. yellow or orange or amber pause wait check him red stop immediately and by the way stop does not always mean yank out whatever (laughs) is in it means stop stop what you're doing stop all movement just freeze just freeze yeah yes yeah don't Don't start pulling things out that are in or whatever because you don't know what the situation is. I think of the game Red Light, Green Light when I was little. I don't know if you ever played that. Did you ever play Red Light, Green Light? Yeah. Okay. Because that's basically like you turn around, red light, everybody freezes. That's what you need to do. Not just, you know, don't just, don't, don't, don't react. Don't start yanking stuff out. Yeah. Just, just stop, right? (laughs) We're just going to stop exactly where we are and hold still. Mm -hmm. So- The bottom needs to be listening to their body and how it feels. And the top needs to be keyed in to the bottom. And like Sandra says, you're not always going to be able to see the person's face. So you need to be looking at all body language. Are they really tense? Have they stopped making any noise? Mm -hmm. Have they changed the way they're breathing? Mm -hmm. It costs nothing to just check in. It's 10 seconds and it just avoids anybody getting hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Leading on to that. It's not uncommon for this to be uncomfortable. Discomfort is to be expected. Again, the butt's not made for this. This mm-hmm. is not what it was designed to do. Mm-hmm. So in the process of, you know, relaxing everything, stretching everything out, even during the actual insertion of penis into bum, it's not uncommon for it to be uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. it should not hurt. Mm-hmm. If it hurts, stop again don't start yanking shit out stop wait because sometimes it's an initial flare of pain maybe the muscles weren't as relaxed as they could have and it's gonna pass but you need to wait okay and once you're in there take the bottom's lead give them a second to adjust again and stuff's not meant to go up there so it's a bit of a <clears throat> feeling you know Give Mm -hmm. them a second to adjust. Don't start moving until they say move. And honestly, I think most assigned female at birth people have experienced this. If you, you know, if if you're having heterosexual sex and the the idea of a a larger than average penis is like fucking hell. And then 
you get down to it and you're like, that's not going to fit. But it does. But you need a second to catch your breath. Yeah, that's similar kind of thing. It's a thing. Like everybody, like in certain situations, you're you're going to need to push past the discomfort to get Mm -hmm. to the good stuff. But it's important to have somebody who can who can work with you to get there. And sometimes it may take a while. It may take a while to get past the discomfort. I love those moments in a fic where it's like all of a sudden light switch <laughs> and it's like oh now we're in oh yeah no Why? now we're in a good yeah, place this is, you know yeah. now this this is what this is supposed to feel like but you have to get there and yeah v- vaginal sex can be very much like that as well so yeah it's important it's important to work with somebody if you want the ultimate goal is to not just have pleasure for you but pleasure for your partner so You've got to be willing to take your time to get there. Small, slight addendum to prep. If you are, if the 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 bottom, the the catcher, the the post box, (laughs) still funny, (laughs) is a male. Obviously, assigned male at birth, people have prostates, so you're gonna find that. And I see this so much in fic. Okay, so much. If the assigned male person is lying on their back with their stomach and their chest up and you insert your fingers, hook upwards, and that is where the prostate is, okay? It's not downwards, it's not on, it's upwards, okay? So I'm sure assigned female at birth people, I've heard about the, you know, we've all heard about the mythical knee spot, ha, 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 ha. And that is the advice given to heterosexual men is hook your fingers up. That's where you find this mythical G-spot. I'm only being sarcastic. Same deal for the prostate. Hook your fingers up, all right? The thing I see in thick is the bottom will be on the knees or they'll be flat on the back, like flat on their stomach, sorry. And the, the, the top... Oh, of the and they still crook still it. They still crook it up. still their fingers up. Mm-hmm. No! Mm-hmm. That's, that's, I'm sure it feels quite nice, but that's not where the prostate lives, okay? Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. the person's on their stomach downwards with the fingers, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, you could put your fingers up and catch them with a the knuckle, whatever. But the point is, it's it's upwards if they're on their back, it's downwards if they're on the front. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. just like, I, I just, I see that a lot and it bugs me because I'm like, tell me you you haven't looked this up without mm-hmm. telling me that you haven't looked this up because that's mm-hmm. not where it lives. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, as an aside, you can stimulate the prey from outside the body completely. Probably get into that in another in another episode. But you can. You don't have to put your fingers up a a side male at birth person's butt to stimulate their prostate. That is not mandatory. So, yeah. Prep. Be slow. Be steady. Be careful. Check in. Listen to your partner. Discomfort is okay. Pain, no. 100% no. Even if your person's into that, again, do you want to be in the emergency room? Okay? Yeah. Because even if... Even if the person doing the penetrating doesn't get hurt, if the person being penetrated gets hurt enough, they might also have to go to the... Like, that is not a place you want open wounds, guys. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. So the last little bit I want to cover is just general safety things. Because, again, a lot of fix tend to be like, wham, bam, spit in your hand and put it in. And mm, don't do that. (laughs) Just don't do that. Don't do that. Number one. And this goes for any person you are having sex with. If you are male, female, non-binary, any variation therein of, if you are going to put your fingers inside any part of someone else's anatomy, cut your fucking nails. <laughs> I don't care who. What? Put your goddamn fingers, put your nails. Right? And don't just cut them and leave them all spiky, jaggedy edges. Fuck all that shit. Take a cut because again, do you know what you don't want to have open wounds? Fucking anywhere. Yeah. But your bastard nails. All right. Cut your nails. So I have a question. So uh-huh. is it as much the length or is it just because you want to make sure you don't have, like you said, hang nails, something that will catch, you know, something jagged or sharp on the side? Like if you have well manicured nails and should people not be, what if they have 
press on nails or fake nails. What's your take on that as they're getting ready to do the deed? If you had press on nails or fake nails, I would say put a glove on. Okay. Just because, especially with press on nails, you mm-hmm. don't want to lose one. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Going to yeah. be a problem for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> mostly mostly this comes from and i will be i will be honest my thoughts here are completely biased as a assigned female person at birth who has slept with assigned male people at birth primarily cis men and this is a bit of a generalization not all men not all men but a lot of cis men don't particularly care for that kind of personal grooming do we just don't even think this... about it? Yeah, it's yeah. just something they'll think about like right away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing your nails is seen as a bit of a, a bit of a girly thing. It shouldn't. Everyone can have nice nails. We don't mm-hmm. discriminate. Mm-hmm. But this seems to be a thing. And they're like, you know, like men, some people that I've slept with have worked like manual labor jobs. So their hands are like roughed up and they just don't think about it. And that is a problem mm-hmm. when you put things in places. Don't do that. So yeah. Cut your nails file them you know make sure that there's no you're specifically looking for like hangnails sharp yeah. edges sharp corners because you don't want to cut somebody whether you're putting putting your fingers in you know the vagina anus don't yeah do because that's that. going to lead to it that leads to infection and that could be a whole thing that somebody unfortunately has to deal with you know for yes. a long time after after the fact so scrub yeah. cut the nails file mm-hmm. them scrub that shit get the nail brush Get in there, all right? Mm-hmm. In the same way you might go and wash your cock off before you ask somebody to suck it, wash your fucking hands, mm-hmm. all right? Wash under your nails, all right? Gloves, it's optional. It's an ass. We all know what it's there for. We all know what it does, okay? There is always a risk that we're going to encounter stuff that maybe we don't want to encounter, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be having anal sex I mean, you should probably prepare for that yourself we'll do another episode on that mm-hmm. if it's impromptu and you know it is you could be the most fastidious person in the world it's a body this i know with what you want to do it happens okay yeah. yeah if you feel more comfortable wearing gloves that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that it's not like it's it, i shouldn't even have to say this but if the thing that's putting you off like oh, I really want to try that, but oh, ick! You know, put some gloves on. Mm-hmm. Natural gloves. Uh, you <laughs> you can buy them by the the box full on mm-hmm. Amazon. Put some gloves on. It's fine. And again, if you are someone who has press on nails or longer nails, it's just it's probably just better. You know, yeah, just lessens the risk of anything. Are there any glove materials that shouldn't be? used like if you're going to be using certain types of lube if you were yeah latex gloves Mm -hmm. oil lube that's Mm -hmm. not going to work great for anybody Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but overall no i don't there's not any any like there's not like any one particular type of glove that should be used or anything again it's just Sil- don't put silicone with silicone and don't put oil and latex together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so just just check when mm-hmm. you're ordering and stuff but don't you know <laughs> you never have to go in anywhere there is all mm-hmm. i'll say yeah. you know yeah put a condom on put gloves on whatever yeah now my personal opinion is that condoms should always be used if you're gonna be doing anything to do with anal play mm-hmm. just because there is a risk of minuscule tears and things like that that can happen. Um, and no matter how well prepared somebody is, no matter how relaxed, how stretched, whatever, it can happen, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just think it's just a good safety practice, personally. Mm-hmm. But I acknowledge that not everybody is going to do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's for you and your partner to discuss. Mm-hmm between yourselves whatever you know plenty plenty of gay men in in committed monogamous relationships decide to ditch condoms plenty of gay men in committed monogamous relationships keep using them purely for the hygiene factor Mm. you know we've all well 
assigned female at birth. I'm so tired of saying that. <laughs> assigned female at birth, people. We've all done the walk of shame to the bathroom, haven't we? We've mm-hmm. all done the walk of shame to the bathroom. Be- keep a towel in the bedroom. Maybe you don't. But y'all, we all know what that walk of shame is like. Same deal, isn't it? What goes in must come out. So mm-hmm. some people choose to use condoms just purely for that. Just, just less cleanup, less mess. You know, again, from a hygiene perspective of what your ass is actually supposed to be used for versus what you're choosing to use it for. Yeah. Well, I'm so thinking too, like if um, like if you've got if you've got two females together too and say one, you know, maybe there's like a pegging situation or something going on there too. Like for whatever reason, like just some stuff is happening. I've read that, you know, some people even not just the washing of the the toys, but sometimes even just like using a condom on, you know, a dildo or whatever. Like, you know, like just to kind of like, just to be on the safe side, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? So, I yeah. mean, I they they can be used for lots of different situations and- scenarios yeah. and stuff like that too no nobody's here to say that sex any kind of sex is is clean mm-hmm. and sanitary and mm-hmm. hygienic because it isn't mm-hmm. it's it's the exchange of bodily fluids and stuff gets messy okay yeah. your hygiene your comfort level with hygiene is entirely up to you mm-hmm. you know if mm-hmm. you feel more comfortable using a condom with toys for the cleanliness factor go for it mm-hmm. you know wear gloves, wear gloves, whatever you want in sex, you know, don't let anybody make you feel like it's weird to Mm -hmm. want to look after that aspect of the situation. Again, if the only thing in the back of your mind is the cleanliness of whatever might be happening, you're not going to have a good time. You're just constantly going to be thinking of that. So put a condom on a toy, you know, and especially, and that comes into my next thing this is exclusive to people who are assigned female at birth as in people who have a vagina um whatever you know trans men non-binary people women if you have a vagina this advice is for you you can go from do not go back to front Mm -hmm. don't Mm -hmm. ideally probably don't go front to back because I don't know that just gives me a bit of the ick personally but you Mm. do you Mm -hmm. but (laughs) you don't want to take bacteria from your butt and put it into the vagina that's a recipe for an infection nobody's gonna have a good time Mm -hmm. so condoms on toys although most people wouldn't think about it that's really fucking useful Mm -hmm. because if you want to you know if you want to if you've been having a nice time with a toy and now a Penis is going to get involved, but you still want to use that toy, just smack a condom over the end of it, you know, mm-hmm. it's fine. and then you just mm-hmm. clean it afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, again, I feel like that's that's like I don't want to say like woman 101, vagina owner 101, whether you reluctantly own that vagina or you embrace it. I yeah, feel but like most I mean, people know that. Yeah, but, but just in the general, thing is, too, there's there's more than one hole, like you know, like there's there's lots of things that can get involved in, in, in the situation, it's not just you know, not just down yeah. there either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah it's kind of it. that and in I, mind yeah i don't i don't want to stigmatize cis men but again like with the nail thing sometimes they don't think about it yeah. so yeah. just for the one solitary cis man that's still listening to this which might or might not be my husband at this point hi sweetie don't do that don't don't switch between once it's in one place don't put it in anywhere else without either putting a condom on it or giving it a wash. All right. Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. a good rule of thumb yeah. to abide by. Yeah. And then the last <laughs> that I have, which I'm bringing this right back to thick now because I see this so much. If you're going to put a sex toy of any fucking variety up your butt, it needs to have a flared base. No, 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 no. I don't care if you're going to hold on to the end of that vibrator. No, you're not. Right. It needs to have a flared base. It is not anal safe. I'm tapping Mm. on the desk because this is important. (laughs) It is not anal safe if it does not have a flared base. Mm -hmm. Okay? It needs to have a (laughs) stopgap. Yes. Your ass is one uninterrupted line to your mouth. There is no point that things stop. Okay, 
anything you put in the vagina, it can only go so far. There's a, a cervix in the way. And even if you get it through the cervix, which I don't think anyone has ever done, the uterus is self-contained. There's no like, it doesn't open up into your abdomen. It's all neatly contained, right? There's nowhere for it to go, okay? Mm-hmm. People have um, IUDs, coils, whatever, because you can put stuff in there and it doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. This is not the case with your butt. That is not the case. Yeah. Every fucking, the carrot thing from earlier on, you're going to be the laughing stock of the ER until the next person with the carrot up their ass comes in, you know? Mm-hmm. It happens. And what tends to happen is it, it tends to be like a like a muscle spasm that will suck something in. And mm-hmm. then because you panic, your muscles spasm further. Mm-hmm. So it gets even further in. So then you end up with people in the ER that have a sex toy and then, oh, I don't know, a pair of tongs or whatever. Oh, yeah. In the... Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. just to highlight how deathly fucking serious I am about this, this is a new story that my husband chose to share with me the other day. Cheers, babe. I was horrified. Some guy in China, um, I don't know how recent this story is. My husband shared it with me. Don't know. An old folk tale for constipation. Put an eel up your ass. <gasps> now, 98% of us are going, oh, hell no. And clenching so hard they might have just seen God. Because no, I was when I first heard it. So what happened was, this man puts the eel up his butt. And again, because it's one uninterrupted line, you are basically a donut. Nobody likes it when I tell them this. You're a donut, okay? You're a hole in a, in a, there's a hole in a circle. You're a donut, right? So this eel just fucked off on its merry way. Oh my God. Up into his abdomen, right up into his bowels. And then chewed its way out. <gasps> Oh. Into his abdominal cavity. Oh god, it sounds like alien. Like the thing just like popping out of the oh. the oh. oh right. Yeah. This is how deathly serious I am. Flared bait only. All right. You can get you can get anal toys that vibrate. Okay. All that kind of stuff. Flared bait only. All right. Hmm. If it's anal beads, it should have a long fucking lead between the last thing that gets inserted into you and the end of the toy so it can't just fuck off, all right? Mm. But no matter what it is, butt plugs, dildos, vibrators, anything you want to put up your ass, flyed base, all right? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't have a flyed base, it's probably some very intense BDSM kink thing, Mm. and we might cover that in another episode. But just for just day-to-day use and play, Mm flyed base, all right? Mm -hmm. So... If your husband gets, or, you know, your partner, whatever, gets ideas about your bedside drawer, no, they don't belong in there. You potentially will end up in the ER and you're the laughing stock of the staff room or the break room. You know, people will be looking at your x-rays. You know, they'll be really nice to your face, but everybody's going to yeah. know. Oh, hmm. Goodness. So I'm with that horrible, horrifying I was so upset. I was like, what? It was just in there. Just, just, just in there. And he was like, and that chewed its way out of his intestines. And I was like, what <laughs> the fuck? What? So. Wow. Don't do that. Also, yeah. like, probably don't need to, don't put eels up your ass for any reason <laughs> or any other kind of fucking animal. That is also not what it was made for. I just think of Quagmire from Family Guy. Like, don't do oh, that. It's a, it's a myth anyway. Yeah, I, but, I did recently yeah. learn that females have 10 extra feet of intestine than males. I did not know that. So I thought that was an interesting thing. That oh, I really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why is that? I, Do I don't know, know why, why but, but I know that's why they say that um, females tend to have more ear, like bowel issues, like bowel syndrome and like irritable bowel syndrome and stuff like that. So yeah, I heard oh. that on a podcast recently and I was like, interesting. That does kind of make sense that, you know, we're... We've got a lot more to worry about down there and it's causing more problems. So you're going to double check that. I am going to. Do- ah, the, the speculation is it is to help them better absorb fat and other nutrients if they are needed for pregnancy or breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. So that does make more sense. Yeah. So our donut is well, that- a lot longer. <laughs> There's a lot more we are that. longer donuts than men. <laughs> we are longer donuts than, uh, than, than cis, than cis men. Oh, um gosh. so yeah that is that is that is all the points that i have got to cover so do you have anything to add any questions any any 
any of the things on no, I, I felt no, no, I felt that was that was that was very very thorough, very, very educational. I think I'm going to call this not every lube is created equal. We're going to do fact versus fiction, maybe, or be liberal with your lube. What would you like better? Oh, surprise me. I was going to call it, if you think you've got enough, no, you don't. <laughs> so, but I thought uh, that might give the wrong message. Oh, and just, just to bring it back to fix and things like that, because that is what mm-hmm. started this whole rampage off couple of fix I'm going to recommend that do it right okay because I I am guilty as the next person of sanitizing sex in my fix certainly I do always try to throw in that like like a disclaimer or something yeah yeah I, I, th- I throw in disclaimers but even if I don't explicitly state the the preparation that has occurred I always try and reference it so mm-hmm. like in taken Sam literally just gets Dean's dick out and sits on it. And mm-hmm. I was like, I can't let that slide. So late, like towards the end of the fic, Sam's like, no, I prep myself in the bathroom with mm-hmm. the lube you keep in the car. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Places that I haven't done that have been in junkies, which is a that's series a other, that is yeah, that's a whole around <laughs> non-consent and rape and things like that. So yeah. that is the only time I've ever used spit as lube. I didn't like it. And I ran the same. Mm-hmm. But I have a couple. I have a couple of fix that I want to recommend. So the first one is alcohol and a can do attitude <laughs> by Blind Swan Dive. This is a this is a um, a Wincest fix, but it's um, <laughs> it's fuck or die, and they're the only ones to fuck. Mm-hmm. So they're both they both identify as you know heterosexual men that don't want anything to do with guys. But unfortunately, they are they are the only people. I think it, I think it might actually have been that they, that it was designed to make them fuck each other. But mm-hmm. the, the premise of the fic is that this happens to them a lot, so mm-hmm. they're kind of they're kind of used to just fucking each other and getting it over with. Mm-hmm. But this, but that that was the the general idea of the prompt. But this particular fic takes the first time that that happens, mm-hmm. and it is it's really good about being realistic and Dean sort of being to Sam well I've been fucked up the ass by Lisa and this is these are the things that you need to do and talking about like you know go to the bathroom beforehand and and Mm -hmm. how to relax your muscles and things like that it's fucking hilarious for (laughs) Sam it's really funny it is really funny but it's a really good like realistic look Mm -hmm. at the situation yeah. The second fic I'm going to recommend, which I didn't tell her I was going to recommend because I didn't think about it until halfway through this episode, is Sandra's fic, Factory Reset. <laughs> because <laughs> it is the second chapter. I mean, if you read the first chapter, it's fucking great. But the second chapter is the one particularly I'm thinking of that Sandra's fic is, um, again, a Dean pegging fic with a female reader. And Sandra did a really good job of keeping the level of sanitation that you expect in a in fanfic in, in fantasy but also alluding to the reality so you know there's towels and things and readers like oh i don't you know i don't if there's a mess it's, it's fine like i understand and dean's like no 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 you cleaned cleaned mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but it's it's i've said i've said this to you before when i've read it i think it's a really good like balance of the the, the really sanitized things that I write, for example, and the really realistic things like alcohol and a candy attitude. Mm-hmm. And I think it hits that middle ground really well. Mm-hmm. And, and also that's because, because of a lot in- of chats with you. So inspiration and understanding <laughs> came to that, came to that. Yeah. Yay. That. Yeah. But in, in that fic, we're talking about Dean being a total, you know, a, t- a total anal virgin having nothing to do. And our reader doesn't go oh yeah no bend over it it's be fine they're like no 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 no. you need to go and and work some shit out with yourself first and mm-hmm. this is where you need to start and come back to me when mm-hmm. you know you're in a better so it's it's really hot like y'all should go and read it <laughs> anyway but it's a really good way of showing you know uh the realism behind mm-hmm. the fantasy kind of mm-hmm. thing so Alcohol and a Candy Attitude by Blind Swan Dive. Shout out again, as always, to Dreamer for bringing that one to me. Like, this is so realistic. It's so good. And Factory Reset by our lovely Sandra, who goes by Jasna on AO3. 
Links in the description, always. Oh, so great. Well, I could say that you've you've that's you've taught it. me a lot, Carly. So yeah, high five, high five, high five, high five. So, so I do have a few other ideas because this will be a series. I'll keep yelling out the internet even if nobody wants to listen to it. I don't care. I yell at the internet all the time. So if there is anything in particular that you want us to cover, leave us a comment, send us an email. We'll cover all the ways to get in touch with us. Things that I want to cover, particularly myself, hygiene. Um, I'm pretty sure I referenced that I would cover that in another in another episode. Mm-hmm. Um, let me just there's a list. Yeah. There's a list. Yeah. Hygiene, refractory periods, because that never gets fucking brought up and fixed, does it? Oh, you just came and you're fucking <laughs> diamond dad again, are you? I all right, lad. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was so much Yorkshire in that I couldn't help it. I could not help it. I just, I just came, that just came out part of me the one my voice there. Gosh. So hygiene, refractory periods, safe, sane and consensual and mm. rack, risk, aware, consensual kink because I don't think they get mentioned as much as they should mm-hmm. in fix. I'm sorry. My brain has switched over onto Yorkshire mode <laughs> and now won't get out of it. <laughs> I don't think they are like really cornerstones in BDSM, in kink and things Mm. like that. And I don't Mm. feel like they get the attention they deserve. And certainly I have spoken to people who, you know, maybe dabble in kink and I say rack to them and they're like, I don't know what that is. So um, I have no clue. So I want to, I want to learn. So yes. So that's definite. That's definitely because I was just about to start reading it off. So SSD, safe, sane, consensual, rack, risk, aware, consensual, kink. It's very helpful, actually, that I have done fix that cover both of these things. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I'll bring my own fix along for that one. I'll mm-hmm. bring the material. You don't have to buy it. Don't worry about it. Another idea that we had is uh, squirting, female ejaculation. Why is it a big deal? Because apparently some people have questions about that. Me? So <laughs> I was like, left your pause. Like, is she going to out herself? Sandra had questions. Sandra had questions about that. And her questions were mainly, I don't get it. Why is it a big deal? <laughs> So I was like, all right, we'll put it on the list. So if you're like, I would really like to know more about X, those are the things that are on the list. Mm-hmm. But if you have anything that you really, you you would like to be explained <laughs> by me with my sometimes very thick, sometimes not quite so thick Yorkshire, Yorkshire. accent. <laughs> Yorkshire. 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 God. And it was I, it was lad that brought it out. That my brain just went, oh, that's what we're doing. All right, then. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. So if there's anything that you'd like us to talk about, mm. like us to cover, you know, we've all had those moments, like I said, right at the beginning of this, where we might be the only person that doesn't know what's <laughs> happening and we're kind of going, oh, fucking hell, all right, then send us an email. We'll keep you completely anonymous as well. We won't and even just you. feel better knowing probably I'm the other person in the room <laughs> that may not know as much as you do about these things. And it's always fun to learn. <laughs> It's always fun yeah. to learn. Always fun it to is. learn something it's... new. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so w- with that, <laughs> we'll wrap this up. Sandra, where can they send us these requests? So if you want to reach out to us, you can email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter at idling in the letter D Impala. If you'd like to make your voice a mail and you want to send us a quick question that way, check the description for a link to send us a voice message. You can find links to our personal socials and our AO3 accounts in the description. And there's also a link to my author website and my original fiction. We also have a website now. Website, woo, hype woo. for the website. Check out idlinginthimpala.com. That is where you will find all of our Idling in the Impala merch. We've got merch, oh, we've got t-shirts, mugs, stickers, whatever you fucking want, we got it. So if you find our merch anywhere else, let us know because it ain't meant to be there. <laughs> Everything is on idlinginthimpala.com. There's YouTube stuff, there's Spotify stuff, there's um, you know, like behind the scenes about us, stuff about me and Sandra. There's videos up there that we can't publish on YouTube and Spotify for copyright music reasons. Sometimes Canon Fodders just need a soundtrack, right? And YouTube mm-hmm. gets really upset about that. Mm-hmm. So we'll just put them on the website. Like, fucking it's still happening. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna try no. to do a Yorkshire cleanse right after. <laughs> so fucking hard. There's no way to cleanse everyone in my house from Yorkshire. Go check out the website. 
you know, have a look around, give us some feedback. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, leave us a comment wherever you access your podcast. But especially if you are watching and listening on YouTube, likes and comments really help us with the YouTube algorithm. All hail its benevolence. In the description, there are the current causes that we are championing. Championing, I can't speak. In that we are championing, and I would like to draw attention to we have been championing for World Central Kitchen and just giving for the unlawful Russian invasion of Ukraine. And since that is coming back into the media now, as it should, I know Misha is currently in the Ukraine doing things. I'm not 100 percent sure what those things are, but doing things, but drawing attention to it, and it's certainly coming back into the media over here. Mm-hmm. Just like to draw your attention to that. Also in the description, I'm sorry, Sandra, I didn't tell you I was going to do this. That's okay. It's Pride Month at, at time of recording. We yeah, are recording so right now it's June. June 2nd. So I'm hoping we're still yeah. going to release this in June. <laughs> well, even, even, if we do, even if we don't, like it's mm-hmm. fine, even mm-hmm. if we don't, but it is currently Pride Month and we have been right from the very, very beginning championing Switchboard LGBT, which is um, a UK charity and the Trevor Project, which is based in the US. Pride Month is awesome. It's great. We should all get out there and celebrate. But Pride Month, especially in the US at the moment, if I see one more boycott, bloody black, right? So Republicans have taken massive offense to Pride Month, anything LGBTQ plus related. So these charities, they are both sort of talking, reachy out, counseling type charities. If you are not in a safe place, and you need somebody to talk to, and you're in the UK, you're in the US, please reach out to these places. Be safe. You know, I want, I would love everybody to be able to fly whatever flag they fly at the highest this month and every other month of the year. But that is not, unfortunately, the world we live in. If you need the help, please stay safe. Please reach out to these places. If you are not based in the UK and the US and you still need help, want help, the Trevor Project has resources for international LGBTQ plus youth. So check those out as well. There are other causes in the description, but those are the two I wanted to highlight. Yeah. I mean, so, I think the other one that's on there is the um, ACLU, American Civil Civil Liberties Union, which I think, you know, goes hand in hand with just learning more about what's happening in the U.S. in terms of rights for everybody and what's being attacked. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if anything going to a site to learn about what's happening and what your rights are, you know, what you, what, what you may need to educate yourself on just to find out what's happening in general is, is important as well. Yeah. Happy pride month. Yay. Happy Happy pride Pride month. Month. And as always, we are a safe space for all members of the LGBTQ plus community. If you come into any of our social media spaces, you are safe. You will not be attacked. We will not stand for that. That is, that's just not what's going to happen. So yeah, come, come, come talk to us on Twitter and things like that. (laughs) And also along with your American Civil Liberties Union thing, it's ramping up for election season kind of Mm -hmm. in the US. So make sure you're checking out all the stuff you need to be checking out in your area, your state. What do you need to vote? Because they're going to make it as hard as fucking possible and you know it. Yeah, they are. So they are be informed as as much as it sticks in my teeth the best thing if you are left if you are a democrat that you can do is burn it down no don't do that (laughs) is be informed and vote Mm -hmm. and maybe burn it down as well (laughs) you can do both you can do both you could vote and burn take a leaf out france's book burn and then vote but yes description chapter reading all that stuff Good Lord, I went off there. Thank you for joining us in the back seat for Sex Education with Carly and Preachy Times with Carly. And we will see you in the next one, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.